is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Unspoiled, covering Justified, Season 5, Episode 6, Kill the Messenger. In this episode, Boyd finally seems to be maybe getting the upper hand. I just fucking, he needs a win, man. Boyd, you need a win, buddy. Welcome to Unspoiled. I'm Natasha. And I'm Alan. Welcome and to Unspoiled Justified. <laughs> Welcome. Um, yeah, this episode was like painful to start off with because poor Boyd is just getting his ass whooped. I couldn't believe yeah. that shit with his friend. Well, I'm getting ahead mm-hmm. of myself here, but sincerely, that that was really irritating. Um, but but before I get into all that, everybody. I think you probably remember, Alan brought this up before we started, that at one point in the distant foggy past, I said that I was going to start doing announcements at the top of the show instead of at the end because nobody listens to the end of the show. And then they all email me asking me questions that I answered at the end of the show, but they don't listen. So I decided that I'm going to start doing that stuff now and I'm going to start today because Alan reminded me. So thank you, Alan, for that. You're welcome, everyone. Everyone. So new patrons. We have Iha again and Molly Murray just just signed up as patrons this past week. So welcome to both of you. Welcome. And um, I think you're both at the level at which uh, you will be able to get immediate access to Twin Peaks, which um, nice. I'm in the last third of season two. And then Maggie and I are going to watch the movie and then we are going to cover the new season of Twin Peaks. So. Right on. I'm pretty excited about that because I've been hearing some bananas things from people. <laughs> have you watched it? Like, are you a Twin Peaks person? Uh, I am. I have seen the original show multiple times. I've never watched Fire Walk With Me. I don't know that I'd call myself a Twin Peaks person because David Lynch pisses me off so much. <laughs> but I definitely enjoy the unrepentant weirdness. Okay. Um. Yeah, Long I answer could, to a short question. I could totally <laughs> understand him pissing you off, though. Like, I get it. Um, <laughs> this second season of the show has been tough at times. Um, and I'm sure that many of you who are familiar with the show know exactly which plot lines I'm referring to. Mm-hmm. I hear that Fire Walk With Me is kind of a masterpiece. So I'm excited to watch that. We shall see. And uh, I'm just excited to finally, once we get to the new season, be watching something with everybody else. Because... Yeah. That is pretty great timing that I decided to cover this with the new season coming out. So seriously, right? Yeah, this actually lines up really well. Yeah. Um, and speaking of new seasons, once I'm done with Penny Dreadful, I'm going to be covering um, the last season of The Leftovers. And mm. after that, the first season of uh, I was totally going to say World of Warcraft Westworld. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Those Um, are two very different ideas. Two very different things. So, yeah, that's that's what's on the docket. And both of those, obviously, Leftovers is with Rashawn, because that's who I started it with. And World of Warcraft. uh, Do you fucking hear me? Westworld will also be with Rashawn. Christ's sake. All right, I quit. starting way behind the eight ball. Yikes. (laughs) Podcast over. Um, Seriously. (laughs) And then, um, lastly, I'm covering Sherlock Monthly with Rashawn, and we're coming up on the very, we're doing episode four this weekend of season three, and then we're going to be doing the final season, which I just finished watching. Have you watched the fourth season? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Because what the fuck? People who have not seen it, I need to hear what you think. I started a chat on Facebook for people who are spoiled on it because it was the most banana season of like any established show that I've seen. I'm saying established because Legion beats everybody for weirdness. But (laughs) this is like a left turn. 
Um, and so I'm real interested to see what Rashawn thinks. And then after that, we're going to start on Harry Potter goodies. Like uh, we're going to do all eight movies in one podcast. And then we're going to oh, do wow. Fantastic Beasts and some of the extra books and things like that. So that's going to be all patron stuff once a month. Nice. Um, so, yeah, I just want to tell everybody all about that stuff because I'm excited about it. We've got a lot of good stuff on the docket. And uh, and after this, um, after finishing Justified, Alan and I are going to be doing The Magician's book series. Yes. So I, I'm excited about that. Me too. I just finished the third book not too long ago, and it took me forever to get to books two and three, but I was so pleased with them. And it really is a series I cannot wait to talk about. And it's going to change because, like, this was one of the few shows other than, like, so I'll be doing Tuesdays. Mondays is Penny Dreadful, so that's a show. Tuesdays is Dark Tower, so that's a book. Wednesdays is Dresden Files, that's a book. Thursdays will be Magician, so that's another book. And then Fridays have been Harry Potter, and that's another book. Um, So the only TV shows that I'll be covering are going to be my extra shows during the day that I record for Twin Peaks and Legion. And on Monday for Penny Dreadful, which will eventually be uh, Leftovers. So I'll be doing a lot more book stuff, which is interesting. Um, we get to the end of the books. There is also the TV show, which I have not yet watched. I have heard it's trash. So we okay. might want to <laughs> just like go ahead and barrel through it and talk about it like in some rather than, you know, episode by episode. But I have not heard great things. <laughs> so, I, yeah. Well, I said that's that's next up for Amanda and I now that we've both finished the trilogy uh, to go in and check out the TV show. We knew they changed some things, so mm-hmm. we didn't want to start it before we'd finished the book series. OK, I'm. I am hopeful. That's the first I've heard of that, but, uh, you know, it could be good trash. I like good trash. Yeah, I had, because Rashawn had seen it, which I was surprised by. And she was just like, no, nope. Like, she thought initially that I, when I said we were covering it, that I meant the show. And she was like, really? She was very unimpressed until I was like, no, 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 the book. Interesting. And, yeah, so she was not about it. Well, now I'm very curious. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's I'm excited for that though. I think that's going to be a nice change of pace for you and I because we've only done shows up to this point, and it's a really fun series. I'm excited to watch you get into it. Yay! Um, all right, so now that's that's all the announcements done. Other than leave a review, guys, because we uh, don't have a new one on iTunes. And let's get on with the show. Let's talk about this. All right, so we are talking about Justified season five, episode six, "Kill the Messenger." This is written by Ingrid Escajeda. This is her third and final episode of Justified. Okay. Um, and uh, directed by Don Kurt. This is his third of four episodes. And uh, I looked up what they were, but honestly, I didn't see a lot of connections. So let's just leave it at that. They're good. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Um, this episode opens not where the last episode left off. No. Instead, it is Art drinking alone at a bar until Raylan enters. Art looks at him and slugs him. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Away. Yeah, because really, what is there to say? <laughs> I was just like, what happened in between? That's what I want to know. Like, did did Art, like, did Raylan tell him and then Art left and was like, meet me at so-and-so's and then just went and Raylan was like, okay, and followed him? Or... That- does that it's because that feels really weird? Yeah, I, I I'm curious myself what the intervening thing is here. Clearly, there's a lot that's unsaid. Yeah. After after Art hits him, he stops and he almost starts to say something, mm-hmm. and then thinks better of it and walks away. Maybe not even thinks better of it. I think he just says he's you just know like, what? "What's the fucking Never point?" Mind. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the way but that he I... stood up when he sees Raylan and the way he was carrying his shoulders, I'm like, yeah, he about to throw a punch. This guy is yeah. uh, is is gearing himself up. But sure enough. And I love after he punches and he like does the thing where he's just like Ugh! with his hand, like it looks at yeah. his knuckles. <laughs> um and yeah, Paya just bails on out of there, shaking his hand, um with the rain pouring dramatically outside. Man, the rain down here in Texas, I swear to God, I never saw rain like this anymore in my life. 
And I was in Guatemala during the rainy season in the mountains, and it was still not like this. This place is bananas. I remember you saying that right after you moved down here. Like, what did I just get myself into? Oh, my God. It's like the thunderstorms are unreal. They're awesome. But they're scary. Like, I used to be like, why are people scared of lightning and thunder? It's the best. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, because it sounds, it literally sounds like somebody has dropped a, like, cartload of two by fours on your roof. Mm. That's how the light, the thunder down here is louder and closer and feels palpable as compared to anywhere else that I've been. Like it really has made me almost jump out of my skin more than once. The windows rattle, the cats go flying across the room from like a dead sleep. And we find them like cowering in the bathroom. Like, yeah, it's, this is just no comparison. It's pretty crazy. I I really love it still, but it's, it's definitely like, kind of puts the fear of god in you a little bit more <laughs> yeah wow i i didn't I, I never thought about it like that my friend lisa and her wife just moved down there about six months ago and her wife does not do thunderstorms mm-hmm. and uh yeah that's well i just don't think i'll mention that to them <laughs> yeah something right? tells me it's now a bone of contention um yeah so so this rain isn't it is appropriately dramatic mm-hmm. but it, it's mostly stays outside of the bar um, but yeah, our, our whole pre-credits thing here is almost totally wordless because mm-hmm. that punch basically sums up their relationship right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go to our credits and we come back to the Kentucky state women's prison mm-hmm. and Ava is getting settled. Oh, poor uh, Ava, man. She looks fucking haggard. Yeah, she is not here for this. They let her look haggard, too, which I appreciate. They're like, yep, she's got bags under her eyes and her like face right around her nose and mouth is red and she's just tired. And I appreciated that they like allowed that to be because sometimes they pretty people up for no good reason when we all know perfectly well that is not how it is. Right. And it's humiliating, you know, just like. The bits that we see where she has to undress and shower in front of like a crowd of people and yeah. bend over, turn and, around and bend over, you yeah. know, yeah, the whole thing. Um, it's just it, I feel and I, I like she. Sorry, I was just gonna say I've been annoyed with Ava all season, but seeing her go through this, this ain't no fun. Like I don't want this either. Yeah, she <laughs> is. Uh, she manages to look equal parts really bored and really nervous and trying not to show it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she seems to alternate between those two things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like, there's a little funky song playing in the background called steel's going to be the death of me. Oh. And yeah, it just really stuck out to me is just, a, it's got this night nice, like funky beat to it. I don't know. It just, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> As if there's not much, it doesn't have any impact on the scene, on the scene or anything. I don't think it just really stood out to me as a cool piece of music. So, yeah, Ava is uh, Ava is now a prisoner. And... Prisoner? What what just prisoner. happened there? <laughs> I you leave me alone. You're right. You're right there. <laughs> uh, Boyd, meanwhile, is doing his very best for her, and we see him in the car psyching himself up because he is going to meet Gunner Swift, one of his old Aryan brothers. And he needs to go ask for help, but it doesn't go quite as smoothly as he wants it to. I really loved seeing, like, seeing how well he carries off being confident, despite us knowing full well that he was just in the parking lot shitting his pants a little bit. Yeah. Like, and when you meet Gunner, yeah, you think you'd be scared? (laughs) This motherfucker is about seven and a half fucking feet tall and is like 325 pounds of solid muscle. Mm -hmm. He's gigantic. I mean, he's like the like just a shade less than the rock. I feel like it's. Yeah. And he's much meaner looking than the rock. The rock still got this sort of like flicker of humor to him at all times. This guy. nah, he feels like a mean motherfucker. And, you know, maybe the giant swastika tattooed on his neck has something to do with that. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. 
Well, you know, it's he's exactly the kind of guy that you don't want to see with a swastika neck tattoo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you see Dewey with that shit, and you're like, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Dumbass. But this guy, you're like, yeah, I don't like it. This is the kind of guy that could get damage done. Yeah. And they talk for a little bit. They're all smiles. And Boyd has to suddenly redirect when he says, like, you know, I almost would have called you a race trader. And then and Boyd suddenly has to launch into a thing about how he found religion. Mm. And he Gunner again surprises him by saying, yeah, I heard that someone, a woman with the name Crowder is now in prison. And so this guy that Boyd thought he was going to be able to play like a fiddle knows his shit already. He sure does. He sure does. Um, but he's nevertheless, uh, Gunner's sister Gretchen is in the prison and Boyd makes a deal for her to protect Ava. And, and can Gunner we talk seems... about what a perfect fucking name Gretchen is once we meet her? Because, yo, Gretchen just has always sounded like a really mean name to me. Like, you know, like, I'm sorry, anybody named Gretchen listening, but I'm not that sorry. You're probably mean. Look at yourself. Your name's Gretchen. And when I saw her, I was like, yep, that's Gretchen. All right. That was some good casting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Boyd manages to make the deal and it seems like everything has gone OK. But uh, we later find out maybe not so much mm-hmm. for the moment. It all looks well. Uh, now we leave Boyd and we go to Allison visiting the Crows at their home, which is surprisingly upscale. Yeah, what? I I was just like mystified by this one. And then when she says something about the renter's contract, I was like, oh, they're renting this place? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it turns out like, you know, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it, and the whole visit, everything is like, it, it's weirdly in order for this family of, you know, misfits that we've seen. Mm-hmm. But they've got all their stuff. They've got the rental agreement. Wendy has this stuff on lockdown. Mm-hmm. And uh, she explains to Allison that her home in Florida is a little too small for a teenage boy because she was supposed to be taking Kendall back. But uh, so that she decided they're going to stay up here. And she also happens to mention that she definitely knows that Allison and Raylan are sleeping together. Yeah, she drops that one in there. A little yeah. sneaky monkey. Throw her off, off base there. Yep. And... She has some interactions. Daryl is mean because Daryl's always mean. But Danny is a psychotic. Yeah, he's a different kind of aggressive. He is like pulling the kind of shit that some dumbass on Facebook would think is like proving your alpha status. Yeah. You know, like this is some fucking idiotic primeval level shit like i hate him so much i hate him so very much that watching this was like hard for me because she can't turn around and punch him in the fucking face because she's a goddamn professional but like Mm -hmm. but you still should though honestly (laughs) honestly i I like I well, just, I hate, to... I, he, I hate him more than I've hated any character on this show so far. I the the visceral, like wanting to dig my fingers into his flesh kind of hatred that I don't feel often. He is too good at this role, and it bothers me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty unsettling. It, the whole thing ends with him barking at her. Mm-hmm. As she walks back to her car. And yeah, it really is just sort of, it's, it's psychotics, the right word. It's aggressive on a whole other level. It's not, mm-hmm. it, it's not even like, like, like veiled threats. No, nope. it's basically just straight up threats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's threats, and, but without actual, like, you know, human words. Yeah. Because God forbid we use our words. I bet he doesn't know enough of them. <laughs> So eventually, though, she makes her way past Danny and Chelsea, and on her way home, she's lighting up a joint when she is run off the road by a pickup truck, and it's a it's a pretty serious accident. Yeah, it is. 
She goes flying. Like, she could have died. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and it just kills me that she happens to be lighting up. Like, he didn't know that she was going to be. Because I, like, part of me, if he were somebody else, I'd be like, oh, good on you. You kind of saw something and you took advantage of it. But he's just that reckless that he yeah. didn't know that she wasn't going to be able to call the police on him. He had no idea. He didn't think that far fucking ahead. He just no. did the thing that he felt like doing. Which <sighs> is exactly what he did last episode. In this yep. episode, he's got to cover his ass over Jean-Baptiste. Yep. Yeah. He yeah, didn't but... even apparently have a fucking, like, plan for what he was going to say. He literally makes this up as he's talking. And I'm like, did it not occur to you that somebody was going to start asking where he was? And that you'd go- you were going to have to answer for that somehow? Like... It just kind of blew my mind that the the lack of thought that went into it, and I don't mean that in a way like against the writers. I mean that this is very much like we have all seen this person, right? If not firsthand, we've seen them on the news, <laughs> and I'm just you know gonna say that in the vaguest way possible, where they just say some shit or do some shit with no apparent thought for the future or the implications or consequences of it. And you're just like, how can you possibly open your mouth with that little thought behind it? How does your mouth yeah. work? But yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and it's not only is it a serious accident, not only is she run off the road and everything, he stands there to make sure she knows mm-hmm. that it was him. And barks at her again. Yeah, and barks at her again. And it's, I think it's even creepier in this moment than it was, you know, yes. in the pat- on the patio. You just get that silhouette. I have to say, too, it is a hell of an actor that can turn a moment of a dude getting out of his truck and barking down a hill (laughs) into a scary moment. Because that sounds fucking stupid. Like if somebody was telling me and then he gets out of his truck and he barks at her again, I'd be like, what? No, shut up. That's so dumb. But that it was really upsetting. So, yeah, good on him. But I hate him. But totally. <laughs> and you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the guys in a pro wrestling storyline who do like heinous shit to each other. And the only logical conclusion that they know they're going to reach is they need to go into the ring and settle this. Mm-hmm. That and I think that's exactly what Danny expects. Mm-hmm. Like what, whatever he does, he's going to go and menace her. He's going to go break several laws. He's going to potentially kill her. And, the worst thing that's going to happen is she's going to come back and they're going to have a fight and he's bigger than her. So he's going to win. Okay. You know, and that's, yeah. I don't know. That's my wrestling brain. And I know that's where you leave the conversation, but that <laughs> I'm, just sit- I'm sitting here. Like, I believe you. I don't I have nothing to add to this, but sure. It's, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Just if you go back and look at any wrestling storyline, especially when they're in some of their crazier. I bet eras. that's exactly where he gets half his fucking inspiration. You know, it probably is. But that's what it's like, <laughs> oh, I slept with your wife. Oh, I, you know, I, ate I out your mom, molest, molested your mother's corpse. I, yeah, you know, you whatever. And yeah, the, the only way that this can possibly be settled is in the squared circle. There's no, you know, <laughs> I I ran over your car with a bulldozer and then dumped cement all over it after I stole a cement truck. That's amazing. And is that yeah, a real pro thing? Wrestling is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's it's, inspirational. It's, uh, that's the kind of thing I'm gonna put in my back pocket for some day when I'm wild enough to fucking steal a cement truck. Someday when I'm old and I don't care about consequences anymore. I'm just going to go fucking bananas and people are going to be like, yo, you're like going to go to jail. And I'm going to be like, go ahead, lock me up. And then I'm going to be like the sweetest little old granny in the courtroom. And everybody's going to be like, she never. And I'll be like, here's some cookies I need. And then I'm going to go right back out there again and get another fucking cement truck. I love it. This is my new life plan. I I like the way you think. (laughs) Oh shit! I think that I might have a new, uh, new character on my hands. I might have to throw into my series. I'm telling you, Mondays and Thursdays, or nine ninety nine a month, WWE Network. They will give uh, you all sorts of inspiration. I love it. It is performance art of the highest order. Um, anyway, so yeah, Danny's a pro wrestler, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Marshall Station. We have our our marshals, <laughs> Rachel and Tim, and. 
Art and Raylan sitting around a table, and Raylan volunteers to do inventory. Which um, everybody is just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> because Raylan never volunteers to do inventory. Um, but yeah, they're wrapping up the Theotonian case. They He's given them no information. He's the top of the food chain. There's no one for him to rat out, so he is just clamming up. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tim points out that Raylan's got a black eye and Art has a bandaged hand. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah, and... Um, <laughs> Meet you outside. How about that? That's basically, what happened? <laughs> yeah. So he wants to know if Raylan also fell in the shower because that's what happened to Art's hand. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they say nothing, but Raylan very, you know, clearly just goes like, "Yep, yeah, I'll do inventory. Not a problem. I got it. Whatever." <sighs> but yeah. on his, I just wanted to talk because, like, apparently that punch is it. Like yeah. that's the extent of the consequences. And I got to admit, I'm a little disappointed. Not okay. like in the show or even in art. It's not, there's nobody to really blame, but I think that's why art is like so angry is that he really is in a position where he can't do shit because if he tells everybody, then he's going against a witness, which would just undermine everything else. The witness says, Mm-hmm. And would ruin that case, so he can't do that. And so, basically, Raylan is in this perfect position where he can confess exactly what he did, and Art can't actually, like, publicly reprimand or punish or even admit he knows. And it didn't occur to me at the time that what the like, because I was thinking that Art might tell, and then I, it didn't even occur to me. They've already got somebody saying who it was and that would undermine everything else. So that doesn't, that's not even an option. And so I think my disappointment is the same as arts, which is just that this situation is yet another one in which Raylan isn't going to really have consequences. Like he's going to have his boss be pissed at him and that might go on for a while. Sure. And it might be uncomfortable or less pleasant to work with or whatever than it had been. But it's not like he's no, in no danger of losing his job at this point. He's in there's nothing real about it. You know, it doesn't feel like enough after just watching somebody die. And I, letting I think it it's one of those it's one of those situations kind of like when somebody just says, like, I, I need to tell you this. I just can't carry it around anymore. Mm-hmm. And it makes them feel better. But now you're stuck with whatever this bombshell is that they just had to tell somebody about. Mm hmm. All it's really managed to do is make the person who confessed it feel better about what they did. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, it's, uh, it, you're right. It definitely doesn't feel like, you know, again, it, like is it Raylan's going to escape. Yeah. I just like, I feel almost like, like Raylan and Danny, unfortunately have a little bit more in common than Raylan would ever want to admit which is that they do shit without really thinking it through too well. And things just have happened to work out for them so far. And Danny's at least fucking stupider than Raylan is. But like that, it has been a lot of just sheer luck that, oh, there just happened to be another agent that disappeared and that we all know is probably dirty at this point that we can pin on being the one that was in his pocket like he didn't fucking know about that and he obviously when uh what's his name vasquez is just like oh guess who it was he had no fucking idea like i just i get kind of mad at raylan for having that that white boy privilege apparently of just being able to (laughs) fucking get out of shit all the time so Mm -hmm. yeah i'm not disappointed in the show i'm not disappointed in art because art's got his hands tied pretty much (laughs) not really um but it's just like, oh, I have to go do inventory. Oh, yeah, your life is so fucking hard. Shut up. Yeah. And then I he doesn't say, even go do it. That's the other thing. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> he doesn't actually end up going to do it. <sighs> um, but Raylan does seem like genuinely cowed. I said before, he's like, yeah, I'll do it, whatever. That isn't really his attitude. He, mm-hmm. he knows he is paying penance right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and he does seem more than willing to step up to whatever punishment art wants to dole out. He doesn't want whatever punishment should actually be given to him, right. but whatever punishment art 
sees fit to, you know, give him. Except that he doesn't do it, though. Except he doesn't do it. Right. So, like, yeah, he's just so full of shit. Raylan. Ugh. Yeah, Raylan. So, yeah, Raylan volunteers. Rachel goes with him. But on their way to the elevator, he runs into Allison, who's on her way up, all banged up and bandaged and looking kind of like hell. Oh, my God. I was cracking up. Before you say anything, wait, what the hell happened to your face? You go first. (laughs) Oh, dear. What a pair we are. Maybe they're great for each other since they both like to live dangerously. (laughs) I'll stay. Um, <laughs> Raylan Danger Givens. I was just watching uh, one of the Roger Moore Bond movies the other night because of him okay. passing away. I can't remember which one it was, but God, they are so bad. It's like they, are... yeah. I think I have appreciated them more over time, but it is definitely not the James Bond that we grew up with it's certainly not who, we, who james bond is right now no but View but i think kill, he is... that was the one. Oh yeah with grace jones yes oh my god is she yeah. amazing <laughs> it, she is oh my god um yeah and and horse riding so that's exciting mm. um and christopher walken if i remember correctly yeah or was that that was yeah. Okay, but yeah Christopher um, Walken, yeah. the result of some kind of Goebbels experiment, which is such a weird fucking storyline. <laughs> okay. That was the final that was the final solution to create Christopher Walken and Alicia upon Hollywood. Yeah. Um, so uh yeah. That Roger Moore one in particular is pretty hard to watch. Oof. What a view I will say though- to a kill. Like really? Oh my god. Yeah, he was the only person who understood that James Bond is inherently ridiculous. So I applaud him for that, at least. Um, Christopher Walken was? or No, uh, Roger Moore. Roger Moore, Roger Moore. okay, cool. Yeah, at least he understood that this whole fucking thing is a joke. Um, anyway. We can Sorry, guys. Follow that Sorry, on our guys. James Bond podcast. <laughs> uh, so, at Audrey's bar... Daryl is leaving a message for Jean-Baptiste, and it sounds like it's not the first one. Mm-hmm. And Danny plays dumb, and Kendall does the same thing, but is a lot more evasive and a lot less convincing. Yeah. Yeah, he's transparent. I feel like I feel like Daryl knows a little bit more than he's saying right now because he doesn't have the proof, and he knows how fucking hot-headed Danny is. So he's, like, smart enough to realize that the way I have to handle it with this guy is wait until I have everything in hand and then jump him, basically. Because I just get the feeling from this scene that he fucking can tell that his brother did something. I don't know. I got the feeling. There's, like, a moment where it almost seemed like he was buying what Danny was selling, but then it passed, and I was like... No, I still think he's he there's no way he can be blind to how dumb his brother is and how impetuous he is and how violent he is. And even if he were, he knows his is that his son? Is that his son? Um they I don't think they ever really say. Uh, that's a good question. No, I just like I assumed I, that and then when I was about to I, say it I was like, "Oh, wait." No, actually, I'm actually pretty sure Kendall is their youngest brother. Now that I'm thinking about oh. it. Oh. That's even weirder. Okay. So yeah, then their I, parents are just like MIA. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure at least that's the case. But uh, but yeah, yeah I, felt, I feel like even if even if he like did kind of believe his brother, there's no way he's going to look at his face and Kendall's face and not see there's something up here. So I'm hoping that he's smart enough because he's not he's like. He's really not a stupid person. No. You know, and he can be a little bit unoriginal is really the main thing. Like, he isn't the type that's as quick as Boyd is. But once a once a solution is presented to him, he's not the man to come up with a solution. 
But if somebody else comes up with it, he's smart enough to tell whether it's a good idea or not. Right. So I'm hoping that he figures this out, man. Because that man needs to fucking go. I can't deal with his fucking face anymore. I hate him so much. Oh, I hate him so much. Okay. Okay. Well, we can uh, we can move on then, I guess. Actually, what I, I don't want to move on just yet. Because uh, Danny improvises this story. And... Kendall backs him up and Daryl starts to push and we see Danny's hand start to shake. Mm, I forgot about that. Yeah. And we see it again later in the episode too, but we see this, this little tick that uh, he didn't have at least, you know, we haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. So nothing comes of it, but it's something. (laughs) Yeah, I forgot about that because he's holding the glass and yeah. I couldn't tell within that scene if his brother saw it or not because the way his eyes are looking, the camera isn't focused on him and his brother at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's not clear whether his eyes are looking at his hand or if they're just kind of staring out into space while he's thinking. And then immediately we get distracted with that guy starting some shit in the background. So Danny gets yeah. sent off mm-hmm. to deal with him and we don't really see you know, the result of what he, what Daryl thought. And I kind of thought he was like going to be using that moment to send Danny off so that he could talk to Kendall by themselves. Um, But that doesn't seem to be what happened. I would really like to see what happened. Yeah. I would like to see what happened with that conversation. If that, if they hadn't gotten distracted and Mm -hmm. Danny had to go take care of a bunch of jerk offs. Mm -hmm. I, I think that was definitely headed in a direction that, um, it, there's no way that story was going to hold up to any sort of scrutiny. Mm-hmm. And Daryl did not seem interested in letting the subject go. So, um, so yeah, but for the time being, there's a reprieve. Danny's got to go take care of some stuff. Um, we go briefly to Raylan and Rachel and their ditch inventory duty. So Raylan can go tick, go kick Danny Crow's ass. Mm. Um, and this is where they also mentioned Allison didn't call the cops because they would have given her a field test and she probably wouldn't have passed. Oh, Allison. Yeah. Girl, like, I can't even um, blame you, though, because who's if they, if you smoke weed, are you not going to light up after having some guy chase you down the driveway barking at you? Like, kind of understandable, you know, so I I get it. I just dislike her. So same, <laughs> same. Um, yeah. But uh, on to happier things, we go to Dewey who's trying to sell his pool so he can make some money to hit the road. This asshole. And he is about to get $800 for that pool until the buyer finds the minor cosmetic damage that Dewey mentioned. Which is a giant fucking hole in the side rendering it useless. (laughs) Yeah. Which he luckily saw because Dewey was all ready to just let him pay for that shit. And... I think that this could have ended in bloodshed because this guy could have gone home with that busted pool and then realized that he had been ripped off and then gone back there demanding his money back and shit could have popped off. So I am really glad that he figured it out first because this show does not need a pool salesman subplot. It really doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. He winds up offering Dewey 20 bucks. So he uh, take it to the scrapyard essentially. Mm -hmm. And, Dewey retorts by telling him that this pool was his dream. And the guy gives him a look like, who on earth are you? Right. Yeah. That this was your dream. I'm sorry, buddy. Like that's a sad statement. That's not getting me on your side so much as like making me wonder about your life choices. Yeah. And then, but then Dewey decides he's not giving up on his dream. So he chases the guy off with, ladder pieces or something well it's yeah it's like the pieces from the side that they had already started to take down he just chucks them yeah Uh, Uh, i I just love that moment where dewey that's dewey's dream is to have a pool i feel like he is this is what i mean like he could have been a decent person he's not like he's not a power hungry person he's not looking for much it's just circumstantial that he wound up being surrounded by fucking terrible people and he never got any education, so he makes terrible choices. Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad for him. Do we? <laughs> yeah. So the buyer leaves, 
And uh, Danny is walking out with a body slung over his shoulder. Mm. And the two of them talk briefly. And Dewey asks if Danny thinks that they could pay off Daryl to leave. Oh, that's right. And Danny is like, he's pretty matter of fact. Though. He's like, yeah, I think so. And Dewey has a plan to get the money from Boyd. And his plan is we grab him put a gun to his head and tell him to hand over the money or he's a dead man. And of and course, Danny, Danny goes for this plan. Of and course. Not only, he he go, not only does he go for it, he thinks about it and looks at him and says, you're a goddamn genius. You know that in all earnestness, of course he does. <laughs> oh my God. I hate him. Like, the same 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 problem over and over again no thought then what nope. idiots then what yeah <sighs> anyway so yeah. uh so yeah i i like that moment <laughs> now back to ava uh ava is talking to her lawyer for the first time really yeah uh yeah it's the wild man actually being a lawyer and he tells her that she's being released into gen pop since Boyd was able was you know Boyd paid to have her back watched while she's there mm -hmm. and he's afraid that other officers might try to take revenge if she's left that never even occurred to me yeah you know like yeah if people think that she did that that makes sense I just yeah never even entered my mind mm -hmm. and apparently they're also they're looking for uh the officer uh Ficus. He's gone to ground. Because he, he just bailed. Yes. Right. I forgot that they said that too, which like, what? Yeah. Like that. And, this is what I'm talking like, Is this him, just revenge? Because that is a bananas level of bitterness to have that you're going to take out on this woman. Like. Yeah. And all the security cameras were turned oh, off when it happened too. Sincerely. Fuck that guy. I hope they find him and I hope that they shove a red hot iron up his ass. And I mean a full sized clothing iron. I could get behind that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Ava is, she doesn't know what to do, but she asked if Boyd left a message for her or anything. And he did. And it's this little hand scrawled note on a folded up piece of paper. And it clearly does not give her any comfort at all. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, it's everything's going to be fine. Stay strong. Yeah. <laughs> Which like, thanks for nothing. Uh, back to Danny and Dewey. They enter Johnny's bar and they find Carl. Um, but no Boyd. And they act tough, and Carl does not buy it for a second. I kind of loved it. And yes, I, I like Carl. We, we, we haven't, you know, we only just met Carl. We haven't really seen him do much in this show. Mm -hmm. And this is a good Carl episode. This is, uh, yeah, good stuff. And they eventually, it eventually erupts into a fight. And despite it being two on one, and Danny, who is not, you know, Danny's an impressive, uh, not somebody you'd want to fight. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. But Carl makes a pretty good account of himself with two guys. I was to take him down. honestly really impressed because it looked like for a second he might win that. So for yeah. a minute, I was just like, well, oh, shit. You know, just like, is he actually going to be able to pull this off? And uh, even though he does lose, I think they're both pretty afraid of him at this point. Like, yes, <laughs> how I mean, there's two of you and he's got a fucking broom. That's the yeah. weapon he had in his <laughs> hand. And he almost still got the better of both of you. Doesn't look great. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, the, he only loses because eventually Danny's able to get his knife and knock Carl in the back of the head, knocks him out. And now they're going to plan B. That's what Danny says. We're going to see how much Boyd's going to pay for his guy. And in fairness, Boyd only has like three guys. So yeah, he but he also he only has like $3. So, <laughs> you know, 
that's, that's the thing that I feel like nobody really knows how bad off he is. So everybody yeah. assumes that he can like, and he's done really well keeping that front up because otherwise he'd be fucked. So yeah. good for him that everybody's coming after him because they think he has money, but it's certainly very inconvenient. Yeah, he's that friend that you have who buys like a new car every year mm -hmm. and has all the coolest stuff. And then suddenly you realize they, they go on vacations, but then you eventually find out like they have absolutely no money. Crippling and debt. Crippling debt. Yeah, they have been, you know, just keeping up with the Joneses just long enough and hoping that no one's going to notice. Yep. So speaking of Boyd and money, uh, we go to a hotel room. Where Duffy and Mike and Boyd and Jimmy and Picker meet with uh, some heroin traffickers. Mm -hmm. Alberto Ruiz and Mr. Yoon, who's a Korean gangster. So that was fun. I was glad that they yeah. addressed it, too, because I was like, oh, look, we have an Asian character for the first time in, like, ever, probably. Yeah. I think it is the first one of the series. Yeah. So I was glad that they were actually like, yeah, we're, let's talk about this. Hey, it's new. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, and uh, they, had, they have this little conversation about uh, Korean slaves being brought to Mexico. And Boyd says, I've read a lot of books about slavery. Yeah, And Duffy qualifies that by going, he's a history buff. Right? Yeah. Well done, buff. Duff. Sorry. Yeah. Call, I'm calling him buff. He's not really that buff. But that was because I was about to snort out loud. I was like, are you really going to? And then he just cuts it it's very smoothly. Yes, well, <clears throat> you know, very well educated he is. Yeah, good job. So, Yoon wants cash up front. That's the deal. But Boyd wants a different arrangement. He has some bad experiences with that model. And surprisingly, Yoon agrees. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not sure why. I feel like there has to be an angle on his end because... He doesn't know them. Yeah. And Picker brought him there under the guise of a particular deal. Right. So I could see that being just kind of insulting, you know, being brought here and then surprise. That's not what we're doing, actually. Right. Um, so I'm kind of curious about whether or not he's in a bad spot and needs some help, too, and is just kind of going to take what he can get at this point or what. But Yeah. That, yeah, I was it's... glad he took the deal. Don't get me wrong, but sure. But yeah, Yoon is as in, he's he, he's as like slick as Boyd is, mm -hmm. and I like that because we haven't really seen much of that. Yeah, he's. I like that. There's a little conversation between him and Duffy where he says something about how people comment on the disparity. I think he says or the. Oh, I'm trying to think of the word he used. But between him and Alberto and mm -hmm. Duffy is like, yeah, well, I think you want it commented on. And he says, well, why would that be? And he says, because it means you're good at what you do. So yeah. he's like simultaneously reading this guy a little bit, but also paying him respect, which is a very fine line to cross. <laughs> like <Right. laughs> you got to be really careful when you're telling somebody about themselves, but also you don't want to be like, yeah, I read you, bitch, you know, like. Be careful, be careful, buddy. And he does it. So good on you, Duffy. Yeah. So uh, back in prison, uh, Ava moves to Gen Pop. And uh, she meets Nikki, her bunkmate. And this is not usually the way that I think of prison. Yeah, this was and maybe more... I just haven't watched a lot of shows in prison, but this looks more like like summer camp or like a hostel in Europe. Mm hmm. Yeah, same. I didn't realize that they were left all together like this. Like, this just feels like a recipe for disaster. I know. And, you know, I have no experience with prison, so mm -hmm. maybe this is the way it is. But it's certainly not what I think about. It's something that I've really learned in the past couple of years, how little I understand a lot of the systems in the United States and how they work. Mm -hmm. Because there are things that are allowed or that are common practice that absolutely blow my mind that I would never think would be allowed, never mind common. And yeah. so 
yeah, this is the kind of thing where I see this and I'm like, wow, this doesn't look like anything I expected. And then the next moment I'm thinking, yeah, probably not, because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore right. about anything. <laughs> Very much in the same boat. <laughs> But it does make sense if you're dealing with a nation that has a completely overcrowded prison system. Mm -hmm. And the solution that we've chosen is not to release all the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Then I guess it makes sense that you would start doing something like this where you can stick 50 people in a room instead of having to come up with 50 individual cells. Right. But it definitely was not. Yeah. Not at all what I expected. And I think that there is like a culture that I didn't really want to know was there that's just you know yeah so they beat up on each other it's basically uh they're they're taking care of the order for us they're establishing their yeah. hierarchies as prisoners so we don't have to deal with the bullshit so go ahead and let them which yeah. to me is madness but you know what prison is just stupid so it makes sense that everything about it would be fucking idiotic yeah not not to go off for too long on this but i just listened to a podcast called reveal Mm -hmm. which is an investigative journalism podcast. And their most recent episode was about a, um, was about the uh, private prisons and a reporter who they say he went undercover in the prison, but that's not quite right. He actually, he did not lie on his resume, but managed to get a job as a prison guard okay. in a private prison for five months. And the only thing he did that was, you know, the least bit duplicitous was he carried around a little pen with a microphone in it. Oh, okay. So he could record what was going on. Oh, I bet that was something. Yeah. And he just, he put in the parent company of the magazine he worked for as his employer. And apparently just nobody checked it. So he got this job as a, you know, as a prison guard. And it's a really, really interesting podcast. But you just see, again, the, 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 this prison culture and especially in a system where it's overcrowded and you don't have a lot of people to control it. And then you throw in trying to make a profit on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's kind of ugly. Oh my God. It's, kind. it's modern day slavery. Mm. It, it's like, it's slavery by the same name. Like we try and act like it's, Oh, well it's technically slavery. No, it says in the constitution that slavery is outlawed except for prisoners. It's flat out right. totally legit what's happening. And when I saw some of the for-profit prisons that were like, oh, hey, Trump, you need some people to build your wall for you? You can have some of our guys. Cool. So we're going to build a wall to keep out the bad brown people with other bad brown people. That's not poetic. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a clusterfuck. Like I said, I don't want to disappear too down too far down that road because I don't think you and I would ever come back. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, if you guys want to hear more about that, crazy. we did an episode of broadcast on it, which is still up on iTunes. So oh, that's right about the new Jim Crow, right? Yep. And um, um, Kinea, yeah. who was my co-host for that, read a book called "Our Prisons Obsolete," which makes the argument that the prison system is so broken and has been proven so many times to not work in any way that there are other countries that don't actually use prisons at all that have a much higher success rate at like rehabilitation and that we should really, if we're going to be following data, be looking at other options. But of course we don't because God forbid you tell people we're not going to lock up bad guys anymore. They will just flip their shit. So it's really just like a political thing. Like we're just going to lie and tell people the thing that makes them feel better, even though it doesn't actually work, which sounds right. Security theater. Mm -hmm. um, okay, guys. Sorry about that. My um, I hung up and called Alan back because apparently my sound was going in and out. So I guess we're better now. Hope so. Um. So yeah. So the moral of the story is prison's awful, mm -hmm. and uh, and and Ava's there. So poor Ava. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah. Now back at the Crow household or the whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wendy is not having a good day. Uh, first, she learns that w what Dewey and Danny did mm -hmm. and goes off on them. And I love uh, Danny. And she is like nails on a chalkboard. Oh, my God. I hate him which, so much. I know. It just cracks me up, though. <laughs> um, then 
the Marshall's SUV pulls up and she needs to first talk Danny out of going out in a blaze of glory and then talk Raylan out of entering the house, Mm -hmm. which will make Danny go out in a blaze of glory. Like sincerely, Danny is talking like she's so annoying. She at least knows anything about how to handle any of this, dude. Because your, oh, yeah. your solution to fucking everything is a gun or a knife. Oh, my God. I hate him so much. Yes. Yeah, so if she was not there, all of the crows would be dead and this season would already be over. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, she is the she's the, the, the lone like firing neuron <laughs> in the crow family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good description. I like it. Uh, so, yeah, she's got to go. She talks down Raylan eventually. Uh, they he does not enter the house. And this is, again, we see Danny and Dewey up against the wall and he has his knife in his hand and the hand is again, shaking mm-hmm. and jittering. And again, nothing happens. So yeah. Okay. Like <laughs> I initially thought that that was a nervous thing, but I'm kind of wondering if it's not a drug thing because you can get oh, the shakes okay. if you're coming down off something. Um, yeah. But that would, you know, suggest that he was coming down off something. And it sure don't seem like he's off anything. So maybe it is just nerves. But uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, it's the second time that they they show it without commenting on it. So finally, though, Raylan relents and they leave to go find the landlord of this place, Mike, and to make sure that the crows really are welcome in the house. Mm -hmm. And this has now become Raylan's mission since he can't kick Danny's ass. Uh, Raylan, I mean, it's a smarter move. Yes. Not, not even gonna, you know, not mad at you. But I just want him to go do inventory. Just, <laughs> do, just stop with this, dude. Like, oh, How amazing would it be if the credits for this episode, instead of the black screen, was just Raylan doing inventory? I would love with it. With the credits rolling behind. I would, oh, I would love that so much. I just need um, to feel like he ever has a consequence to anything. I really do. Man leads a charmed life. Uh, I mean, the, I feel like inevitably the show is going to, we're coming into the last season soon. So we're going to have to start hitting a point where the charm fades. But I'm I'm already at the point now. I mean, I was at the point pretty early on where I was like, this guy is kind of needs to be fired, right? Like that was, <laughs> that was pretty pretty much like in the first season. I was like, he's a bad policeman. Um, so yeah, well, in season five, I'm definitely like, oh, uh, guys. If I learned anything about law enforcement from the wire. Raylan will be, you know, joint chiefs of staff right. <laughs> by the end of this show. Yeah, probably. Because that's just the way this works is yep. people fail upwards. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty flagrant. And it really is like, this isn't his job right now. This isn't the case he's working. This is him wanting revenge, mm-hmm. which is totally understandable, except for the fact he's on the clock. He even has a partner with him. Right. That was the, honestly, I was a little disappointed in her for encouraging this. I feel yeah. like she gets in the elevator and is like, you're going down there, right? Well, I'm coming with you. And I'm like, girl, you need to fucking remind him of the fact that he has been punched in the face recently and maybe does not want that to happen again. But no, she's Wait. egging him on. They even bring it up, though, at the end of the episode where Raylan kind of says, you wanted the opportunity to tell me off (laughs) and look superior when this all went horribly wrong. Yeah, that's true. And uh, which she doesn't cop to and Raylan then says is unfair. But I think it was kind of true, too. Probably. I mean, again, though, how can you blame her when he doesn't ever have to face anything? Oh, totally. So, yeah, like, I think he's being like, well, you're doing this. And with this tone as if it's like unreasonable. And it's like, nah, Raylan, seriously, like, it's not unreasonable at all. Actually, it's it's the least that you should be worrying about. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so uh, back in prison, Ava enters the prison yard for the first time. And she gets uh, menaced by Patrice and the black gang, I guess. Mm-hmm. 
and she befriends Danielle Panabaker from The Flash. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, look at this girl. And I thought she was going to be Gretchen for a second. And I was like, um, I don't think so. Really glad that was not the case. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was not going to be buying that shit at all. Yeah. And she is Penny, uh, who is, you know, th- a not horrible prisoner, which is always nice. Mm-hmm. And she's also, though, apparently kind of a useless prisoner because she just backs right the hell off and says, I want nothing to do with this yep. as soon as uh, Patrice gets in Ava's face. Yeah, with the kind of t- the kind of vibe of somebody who's been here before and knows better now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and then she meets Gretchen, who has been paid to watch her back except for... Gretchen calls Boyd a race trader, holds her down, and starts slicing off her hair. Yeah, I thought that was going to go a lot worse than it did. Yes. She does get a couple of punches in, but yeah, it really just comes down to the hair. Yeah. So, um, And then we see Boyd getting a call and looking very unhappy about it. Oh, Boyd. I mean, it, 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 the funny thing is, like... It's not even like he's that surprised. It feels like he kind of in his heart was like, this went too smooth. It had to go wrong. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, I just felt bad for him because, you know, he keeps on trying to do right by her in this impossible situation and it keeps going left and it's not his fault and it's not her fault. It's every everybody's just terrible. Well, you know, and it's not even her fault. Or her, it's not even like wrong of her to believe the way that she is, Mm -hmm. because if you take look at it from her point of view, it's just like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Um. So. And this um, girl Gretchen, what is this actress's name? I'm checking right now. Spice Williams Crosby. Uh, the first vegan bodybuilder to display her physique and acting ability on screen in the CBS TV movie Getting Physical in 1984. Damn. No shit. Ah, okay. Um, she looks a lot like somebody I went to culinary school with who was also uh-huh. a, a, a very open racist. So oh. I, I thought just... you were going to go with vegan or bodybuilder. Nope. <laughs> an open racist and I did not realize at the time how bad she was until I heard like a couple jokes she made. And even then I was still trying to give her the benefit of the doubt because nobody wants to think that somebody is that terrible and that they are like working with them every day. And that that person is their own age because we all like to think racists are dead. And, uh, but yeah, she was. She was that terrible. And she tried to friend me on Facebook. And I was like, are you high? And this woman looks so much like her. That girl's name was Heidi. Um, and she also thought Fuck she was you, good at Heidi. decorating cakes. And she was not good at decorating cakes. And she really thought way higher of herself in every sense than she deserved. And Heidi, your work was not all that. And you sucked. Bye. Yeah, she she kept trying to make designs and they kept all coming out as swastikas. It was weird. It was so weird. Um, yeah. So this, this bitch, I really expected when we came back to Ava later for her face to be smashed in and yeah. it was not. So that was a pleasant surprise. One of the only ones. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ava does not get her nose broken or anything else, mm-hmm. but, uh, but yeah, it doesn't go so well. So Raylan and Rachel uh, enter the hardware store, Mike's hardware store, and they find Daryl and Kendall working there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Raylan, well, I should say Kendall is definitely working there. Daryl just seems to be walking around with a saw. So, right. I knows? love that entrance, man. You just hear <laughs> the saw. And then he just comes around the corner. Oh, um, that is that is theater. That is well done. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they go back and forth a little bit um, and then Raylan does eventually go back and find Mike who is not who has not been sawed into a bunch of pieces and stuffed into a barrel mm-hmm. um, he is in fact alive and well and he does say like yeah I agreed to let Wendy and Kendall rent the house they were said they were living out of their car and then Daryl and Danny just kind of showed up surprise surprise and he also mentions that his hunting cabin was a part of the deal. 
which yeah, is to which Raylan's not... like, oh, ruler. Yeah. You practically see him like do a little jig inside his head. <laughs> yeah. Now, back at Johnny's bar, uh, Jimmy reports to Boyd that Gunner is holed up with about a half dozen of his Hitler humpers. And he's with Boyd to the end, but taking them on directly would be stupid. Hitler humpers. I forgot about that. For crying out loud. Oh my, why? That's, that's, that's going in there. That's coming out on Facebook. I hope y'all are ready. Those of you who are <laughs> friends with me on Facebook, that is about to be a thing. Oh, that's great. I just totally, ha- I don't know how I miss that. I think that when Jimmy talks, I just kind of tune it out because he's so boring. He is kind of, yeah, he's Bland. just sort of a play- placeholder person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Eventually, they'll get a much more interesting character, we hope. Owen always calls guys like this bland, and it just feels so appropriate. I like anything yeah. that's like, you know, ev- evocative of food, as we know. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Jimmy blandly attempts to raise Carl on the phone. <laughs> And Dewey answers and starts making threats, except the reception is so bad that Boyd and Jimmy can't hear him. Ugh. Dewey is... I'm so sorry, Dewey, but and nothing works out for you, buddy. Nope. Ugh. Not even a little bit. So good. So eventually, he hangs up, and that's just as Raylan and Rachel pull up at the hunting cabin, and he has got to go scramble for cover. Um, they go in to rescue Carl and they start to fight for about two seconds before Raylan start threatens to shoot the dog. Yeah. And this Danny the only thing that gets Danny to back down. Yeah. And Danny goes, well, all right, let's, you know, let's be reasonable here. <laughs> I've like, I can't decide if he actually gives a shit about his dog. Really? Or if it's just that his dog is his favorite weapon? I mean, I guess they're not mutually exclusive. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I could very well see both of those things being true. Right. Um, but uh, Raylan starts to talk about this kidnapping that they're interrupting. Until Carl starts to insist that he might be there uh, of his own volition. Oh, my God. And Danny goes, yeah, we uh, have some things in common. <laughs> we we never can remember our safe word, can we? Oh, I, when he started to be go down that road, I was like, are you really? Yep. <laughs> yep. But it makes sense because he wants the satisfaction of kill, kicking this motherfucker's ass or killing him. Either one yeah. on his yeah, own. Is, Carl's star is rising in the show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah so that whole thing like you said earlier goes sideways it goes left (laughs) and doesn't exactly end the way that they thought it was going to um back at audrey's the situation with the crow family is like rapidly deteriorating and daryl and wendy have what sounds like it's about to be like their final blowout Mm mm-hmm about what is going on. Wendy says it's over. They need to leave. Daryl insists that's weakness. We need to stay. There's something going on here. Danny comes in to tell them about what happened at the cabin and they turn and Daryl turns on him. Rightfully so. Right. It's all coming to a head. They're all just about to either kill each other or go their separate ways. And then Boyd comes in with With his crew. Fucking fanfare of trumpets. Yes. (laughs) And they are here with a job offer. And Dewey is in the background, horrified and at this turn of events. Fucking Carl blows a kiss to Danny. Yes. Oh, yes. oh it's so good. Yeah, Dewey is just buddy. He was so close. <laughs> you were so, so bad at this. Get Just get another job, friend. Well, he was trying to. He was going to get the eight hundred dollars. He said he was hitting the road. Yeah, that's going to work out so, for you. Why don't you go sell your kidneys? 
He clearly has many of them to spare. So. I've got four kidneys. Oh my god, that that one, that whole episode that was just thinking about it stresses me the fuck out all over again. Okay. <sighs> so yeah, poor Dewey cannot catch a break. Mm-hmm. Um, at Gunner's garage, there again, they're all holed up and they're waiting for. Boyd to, to strike. And instead, Boyd just strides in, asking for a refund. And Gunner has his skinheads, but Boyd has his redneck army. That's a really good, yeah, redneck army. I like it. Yeah. And they hold everyone at gunpoint, which feels like a weird, like, it seems like they should have that stuff at the ready, but they are totally caught off guard. Yeah, they're Bye. apparently like, oh, I thought we were just going to fist fight. Yeah. Like, what year is this, buddy? You guys are supposed to be, like, like prepared for, you know, Obama to take your guns away. Aren't you, like, out buying That's them all saying. up and shit? But, yeah, apparently I, not. I saw Green Room. I saw <laughs> Green Room. I know how you guys are supposed to operate. Oh. And, yeah. You, sir, are no Patrick Stewart. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they all get held at gunpoint. By Boyd's Rednecks. And Daryl gets to take out all of his frustration on Gunner. And just pounds him into the cement. It's pretty great. And, yeah. it, you know, I, it didn't really occur to me, I think because of the way Daryl holds himself, how big he is. But he's almost as big as Carl. Or no, not Carl. What's his name? Gunner? Yeah, of course Gunner. his name is Gunner. Yeah. Of course it is. Um, And... If the, there's something about the South that they love to name their kids like activities, like Gunner and Tanner <laughs> and Ryder. Like I've met a bunch of kids with these names, and it's so lame. There was somebody with the name, uh, or a girl who was saying like, "When I have a boy, I'm gonna name him Riggin." Riggin. Really? Like really? I, and I just I didn't like intend to be such a snot, but I just went <laughs> when she said that. And she was like, what? And I just was like, friggin' Reagan. I was like, that's just what he's going to be called. And she kind of looked like that had never even occurred to her. And it became sort of a thing. And I felt bad. But I mean, (laughs) that's your own fault. You should be glad that it happened before he was born. Um, It's true. But yeah, he is almost as big. And he just goes to town on his face. And it is pretty great the look that Boyd gets. Like, he is so... So oh, satisfied isn't even the word like the the catharsis of watching this guy get his face be, be in is Daryl's getting to take out his rage. But so is Boyd with everything that's been going wrong. Yes. And Danny has a massive erection. Oh the my God, you're right. I meant to mention that because he keeps on. Yeah, yeah, give it to him. And mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> give it to yeah. him is generally not the thing to say unless. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and by the way, Michael Rappaport is billed at six two and a half. Just FYI. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I like this Gunner thing because Gunner seems like when you see him, you're like, wow, that's a big guy. I wonder how Boyd's going to get over on this big guy because clearly any fight is going to end with this guy, you know, at the top of the heap. Mm-hmm. And but like if you hold him at gunpoint and you just let someone hit him, he's right? going to fall eventually. It's kind of one of those things like it, it also would not have surprised me if he just like got shot and died (laughs) because just because you're seven feet tall doesn't mean that you're bulletproof. Uh, So it's it's an ignominious ending to that little plot. But so the actor who plays Gunner's name is Branton box, which is Mm. just worse than Gunner somehow. (laughs) And I'm trying to find his height and I can't because normally you like Google somebody and just say height and it's like right there. Right. Um, but I, oh, here it is. Six foot five. Weight, 235 five. pounds. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> yeah. Big dude. Yep. Um, 
So yeah, Boyd gets his revenge and he gets his goddamn money back. Yes. I'm really concerned about what happens after this. Mm-hmm. Because this doesn't seem like the kind of man that's just going to let this happen. Well, although Boyd does tell him anything that happens to Ava will be taken out on Gunner a hundredfold. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that's enough. But, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And I will also say Gunner isn't even as even though this, you know, their first interaction didn't really go well and Gunner did sort of manage to pull one over on Boyd for a little bit here. He's not the kind of guy I don't get the impression of him as the mastermind kind of guy. No, that's true. So I don't know that he has the initiative to come back, except in a way that like Danny might come back on somebody, Mm -hmm. which is to hit them repeatedly until they stop moving. And that's only if he can get close enough to Boyd to make that happen. It's really remarkable the moment that Boyd sees the flag hanging when Mm. he realizes or not even that he realizes because he knew already, but I think that it just didn't like enter his head that this was going to be an issue right now. Like the way that it is, how disappointed he looks. It's just been so recent that he was of that mindset and for him to like have grown enough that, he has the discomfort of the average person upon seeing that kind of paraphernalia. That's a big That's interesting. leap, you know? Yeah. Um, so what I'm saying is I'm proud of you, Boyd. Look at you being uncomfortable around racists. That's nice. <laughs> way, to, way to be, buddy. Right? That's Good the most job, I can Slipper. say. Some people <laughs> grow slower than others. What can you do? Mm-hmm. So, uh, back at the prison, again, uh, at night, Ava borrows Nikki's razor that she knows she has stashed. Mm -hmm. And uh, she cuts off all of her hair to, like, this knockoff version of Everybody Hurts. Yeah, it was like, I mean, I kind of figured this was what she was going to do. Because when she walks through the yard, everybody's touching her hair. It's real creepy. Yeah. Um. I had a version of this when I went to a nightclub and every guy I walked by tried to grab my hand. And it was just one of those, like, apparently it was kind of a thing in the club scene at the time, but I wasn't real into clubbing. Like I loved to go, but it wasn't something that I did every weekend and I was not prepared for it. So I kept having dudes do that and, and they would do it softly so that you could pull out of it, but they would, do it and like hold eye contact with you to see if you would stop and talk to them instead of just like walking up to you. And uh, it's really weird because you feel like you're passing through a bunch of like clinging fingers. Yeah. That's like deeply unsettling to me. Mm hmm. Yeah. Welcome to being a lady. Yeah. So happy. I'm a guy. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I love how, like, viscerally that one got to you. It really did. Yeah. I need my space. Sorry. I'm just yep, one of no. those people. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, same. Um, so, yeah, so Ava cuts off her hair in a very dramatically appropriate moment. Um, back at Boyd's office, Boyd has a phone conversation with Hot Rod. Oh, my God, and... this is good. I was like, Hot Rod, you can tell him in some way. I know I believe in you, man. You can let him know. <laughs> and he sure came through. See, was was it good? Because it felt to me like, like the world's most obvious code. Because the only reason it was good is because that dummy was the only person in the room with his gun on him. If there had been anybody else there who knew a little bit more about shit, that would have felt like there's no way they're letting that slide. But there was yeah. only one rando... And that was it. And it, he's literally the only person that I would have accepted as not, like, you know, being able to see through that at all. Okay. Yeah. I, I suppose that's fair. I guess so. It just, it, I don't know. I feel like if I was holding somebody at gunpoint and I told them, say this thing, and they start spouting off about a story, I just like, like no, 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 no. There are no stories. There are no I've seen TV shows before. That's not what... No, no. Stop. And But you're right. It is just one dude 
who we doesn't have a name or any screen time. So fine. yeah, I'm confident that this is somebody who like rather than risk interrupting and because that's going to sound bad. What do you do? You know, like you can't just hang up. That sounds suspicious. You can't interrupt. That looks suspicious. It just seems to be, oh, remember that time, buddy? Well, you kind of let it ride out unless you have the confidence that you can play off interrupting convincingly, which I don't think he could. He doesn't yeah. like we don't know anything about him. Yeah. All right. Like That's how fine. what would you do? Like if somebody started to. Yeah. And you had a gun on them and they were trying to act normal during a conversation. How would you like. I don't know. I feel like I would set up the ground rules ahead of time. Of like, you know, when you talk to Boyd, this is what you say. No more, no less. But like if he starts to say something else, then what do you do? If he just like ignores the ground rules. I guess I crack him in the jaw with the butt of my pistol and go with plan B. Okay. So you're assuming there's a plan B is really the thing. I don't think there would have been at the moment, but suddenly after I've hit him in the jaw with a pistol with the other guy on the phone, I'd have to come up with one. Okay. Got you. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I I would like to think that were I in this situation, I'd have put more forethought into it, certainly before the phone call actually happened. Yeah, like, I, I'm i okay with the way the phone call was worded, like the way he handled it, because there's one guy. But it is a problem that there's just the one guy that we don't know. That's true. Like, this communication seems like it's somewhat important, and you'd think that there would be people of significance there to make sure it went okay. Yeah. So... Yeah, that was the thing that kind of I was like expecting somebody to be giving him the evil eye or like, you know, catching on. And then when the camera pulls back and you just see it's one dude, I'm like, oh, well, OK. What yeah, I they thought I doing? remembered it being Johnny. I thought I remembered it being Johnny. So the fact that it's just some no name dude, mm -hmm. it does change things a little bit. Yeah. They just feel I have even less respect for Johnny than I had, you know, an episode ago. Yeah, man. Johnny is not good at this shit. I've been saying. So anyway, yeah, he drops this code. And Boyd is, you know, picking up what he's putting down. Mm -hmm. On the way back to Lexington, we have Raylan and Rachel in the car, and they have a heart to heart about. Uh, uh, well, they don't really talk about anything directly. I guess that's not really a heart to heart, is it? Mm -hmm. um, Raylan. Told, calls her the office kiss ass and she calls him a son of a bitch mm -hmm. and eventually she admits she was, I came with you in case you opened up a crack and wanted to talk about how bad you could have messed up that art has a swollen fist and you've got a black eye mm -hmm. and he thinks about it and he says he thinks the world of her he would trust her with his life but he is not talking about this I'm not saying a goddamn thing about me and art because if you did, it would drag the whole office into a shitstorm of biblical proportions. Isn't that right? Yep. And she looks over at him and he just looks back at her and twitches his eyebrows a little bit. And she's just like, oh, right then. And one of those like, yeah, I guess I'd rather not know, actually. So our last two scenes we have Raylan uh, is uh, having a drink with Allison. And she's giving him a hard time about going after Danny Crow. Her house is adorable, and... BT Dubs. Oh, I didn't really notice it, to be honest. She's got this really cute green couch with these pillows, and she's got a really nice, like, green uh, patterned armchair that looks like it came from, like, Target. Um, okay. And it's just a general nice pale, like, cream and uh, green color scheme, like a spring okay. green. And it's very warm and nice. I like the way it's decorated in there. I would go for that if I wasn't... You know, dating a dude who likes black and gray. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a nicer place than most of everything we've seen on Justified. That's true. That's very true. Except for when the cops are raiding the places. Yes, right. <laughs> except for the except for the occasional mansion. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it finally comes around to Allison telling Raylan he's an old fashioned hero, and Raylan's not so sure about it. Mm -hmm. And she says. I can tell you're a man who'd run into a burning building without blinking an eye. The thing is, 
I think you're the one setting the fire. <laughs> Which is such a I like that line. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, He'd set the fire and then be like, wait, oh shit, who's in there? That's what right. would happen. Yep. And then he'd turn around and be like, all right, fine, and try and fix it. Good job, buddy. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty dead on. Then lastly, we go back to Daryl and Wendy, and they are counting their cash from the job with Boyd. And Boyd comes in, and first he calls Wendy a lawyer, and she looks very proud of herself. And then Daryl immediately tears her down by correcting him that she's only a paralegal. Oh, my God. He's such a dick. Yeah. And I, I just – I like that little bit of – again, she's very – she's she feels good about this. and mm-hmm. that he, that He's recognizing that she is important. Mm-hmm. Until suddenly, like, no, and she gets all, like, cowed again. And Well, I didn't, I didn't feel like she got cowed again. I think that it was more like she looked at her brother and she's like, oh, see? Because her brother, it's, I think she's realizing after the way that he was, like, trying to get her to stay down here that he's negging her. Like, he's trying okay. to act like she, oh, you're not a real lawyer. What do you matter? Then the next breath, he clearly really needs her. So I think she's like starting to realize what his game is. And now there's another dude who's like, hey, you're probably pretty valuable. And she's like, oh, shit, look, another person thinks that I'm valuable. Isn't that interesting? It's almost like I could use this to my advantage somehow because both of you need some help. So I'm hoping that she's going to lean on that a little bit. Okay, I like that interpretation better. Um, yeah, and I, I, I guess cowed probably wasn't the right word, but it just felt to me like, hey, man, come mm-hmm. on. Yeah, that for sure. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, he – but being a, a lawyer-type person, Boyd tells her that he wants to talk about a job and she should probably leave so that way she can go on pretending not to know what her family does for a living. Mm-hmm. Which she apparently appreciates because she leaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wasn't sure and, she was gonna, but yeah, she goes she goes ahead. Yeah. And when it's just down to Boyd and Daryl, he tells him that uh his cousin Johnny needs killing. And he just might be the man for the job. Yeah, his cousin Johnny does need killing. He oh, yeah. sure do. Way overdue. I just need him dead. Like we just need to be done. Please. Please yeah. be done. I'm so over you, buddy. What Natasha doesn't know is that last episode of Justified is Johnny is the last man standing. Oh, I would just be so angry. He just does not deserve it in any way. Then there's the spinoff series, Johnny Fied. <laughs> Went on for six seasons. I hate you. I hate you. You go to hell. Do you wait and see? You don't know. Oh. Uh, but yeah, but that is our... That that is the end of the episode with them appearing to grant our fondest wish. Our fondest wish, man, is this what we've it's come a, to? It's it's somewhere in the hierarchy. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just like, I'm really liking this season. I oh, good. I really expected to be like irritated by the crows much more than I am. Like I hate okay. Danny a ton, but I mm-hmm. hate him in a very like. It's not it's not like it was with like Dickie Bennett where I was just like mm-hmm. you're just so fucking stupid and I just can't I just can't stand your stupid face and I just want somebody to just slap you. Like Danny is a much bigger like no deeply hate you. Want somebody to beat your skull in. You are everything that is wrong with America. And it feels like I'm that is He's just drawing much more of a like a commitment out of me there. I'm more mm. invested because of how awful he is. And yeah. and the fact that Daryl is competent. That helps, too, you know, like and that Wendy is competent, that there isn't just one person that is trying to wrangle a bunch of idiots. You know, really, everybody in that family is pretty smart, except for Dewey and Danny. <laughs> even what's his face what's his kid's name kendall Ken- kendall he's smart too you know like so i'm actually enjoying that family way way more than i thought 
So that's Excellent. a nice surprise. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. And I do think that they're a um, – Danny in particular, he has – I feel like he has a uh, a danger, dangerousness to him that a lot of the characters in this show don't have. I think that's even, what the hate. What the hate is is that I hate him because he feels like he could really do damage. Where Dicky, I was just like, "You're just gonna fuck everything up." So I'm not like worried. I just hate looking at you. Yeah, and that's and I think that a lot of the antagonists in this show, like, was uh, what's his face, old rich guy. You know, was he dangerous? Absolutely. Was Robert Quarles dangerous? Absolutely. Uh, Quarles is probably the closest, but Danny, yeah, he just really feels like that man could hurt somebody Mm -hmm. in, you know, and it could happen any, at any minute for any reason. Yeah. I think that's part of it too, is that quarrels. It's like, he definitely hurts people, but he's care. He's careful about it. He's conscious of it and has himself like somewhat under control, except for, you know, when he picks up tricks that he beats up. Um, But Danny, it's like, he just goes off on literally everybody. He's so unpredictable. And because he's unpredictable, People who should be on their guard more aren't like, I don't think Raylan really got how da- how much danger he was in when he was right outside that doorway. Mm. Because why would you think that this guy would be insane enough to leap out with a fucking knife? You wouldn't think anybody would be that stupid. But welcome to Danny Crow. So, yeah, he's he's just a whole different kind of dangerous. This just really like chaotic evil thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so good. I'm really happy to hear that because we're about halfway through the season now. I'm glad to hear you're enjoying it. Yay! Uh, and uh, well, we will have to see what happens and how much longer we have to suffer through Johnny and <laughs> what it looks like with no hair. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how that turns out. Because, uh, you know, I, I, part of me is like hoping that it, they do it the way that it would really be done if it were a... Uh, you know, razor blade that when you couldn't even see the back of your head and that it looks like a hot mess. And another part of me is like, Oh, Ava's got it so bad. I hope that her hair is looks decent at least. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do I want realism or do I want to not feel so terrible for her? I can't decide which is stronger. All right. Um, well, we did all of our announcements already. So is there anything that you wanted to add on that front? <laughs> No, I don't think so. I mean, people who are interested, I've been, I've been, a little, it was quiet on Twitter for a little while, but I'm getting better at that again. Uh, you can find me at Al Kingsley. Uh, and you can find me hanging around the Unspoiled Clubhouse and in uh, several of the spoiler chats also. Awesome. Um, yeah, same, guys. You know where to find me Facebook.com backslash Unspoiled Pod, Twitter at Unspoiled Show. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Natasha Writing. Um, we're on Instagram at Unspoiled Podcast. I'm on Instagram at The Glamour Junkie. And I uh, feel like, oh, yeah, and Patreon, patreon.com backslash unspoiled. And uh, if you want to shop on Amazon and support the show, it's unspoiledpodcast.com backslash Amazon. So keep doing that. And you know that it will go to me whether or not you see people have been messaging me and asking, like, I'm trying to use your code and it doesn't say anything about unspoiled. When I go to that Amazon link, it won't. It won't say anything about unspoiled on the link. It won't say anything about unspoiled when you check out. But trust me, if you use um, unspoiledpodcast.com backslash Amazon, it will work. It will go to me. So, uh, yeah, do that every time you shop Amazon, bookmark it and use it every time. And you'll be like supporting the show without even having to think about it. So that's a thumbs up, right? Right. Um, right. All right, everybody. Well, thank you, Senor Allen, for being here this evening. And um, we will see you next week with a new episode. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye.
is an unspoiled network podcast.